One of my favorite all-time stories comes from the Bible of Personal Development, Think and Grow Rich, the very first chapter where they talk about three feet from gold. You remember the message. R.U. Darby was a young aspiring gold miner and got gold fever. Goes out west and starts digging. Sure enough, discovers a couple little nuggets in a hole. He buries it and hides it and goes home and tells his family and friends. Well, they chip in money to buy equipment to pull it out by the truckload. Well, sure enough, the first ore cart comes out and it's filled with gold. Woohoo! They're gonna be rich! And they kept digging, but the gold ran out. They kept digging, but there was no more gold. Defeated, Darby walks out of that mine and says, I quit, I'm through! And sees a junk man walking by. He says, hey buddy, give me 200 bucks. I'll sell you this mine and all the equipment. I'm going back home. Well, the junk man realizing the equipment was worth thousands said, of course, you got yourself a deal. And then Darby goes home defeated. But the junk man, he does something brilliant. He goes to a local engineer, an expert in mining, and says, what happened? Says Darby hit gold and ran out. Well, the engineer starts laughing. He says, that's so simple. That's like mining 101. Everyone knows that gold runs in a straight line. It's called a gold vein. <laughs> what Darby did is come in one side, hit gold, and he popped back into dirt. He said, all you gotta do is go back to where they discovered treasure, go 90 degrees, just three feet, the opposite direction, and you'll tap back into the vein. Not only did the junk man pull millions of dollars out, but it still fills Fort Knox today. Oh, and the moral is, how many times have we or someone we know quit one class short from a degree or sales or marketing or anything that's hard? And I quickly realize it's the most successful people on our planet, all they do is one simple task different than you and I. What is that? Well, they don't give up when they're that close to the finish line. The very first interview, I had an opportunity to sit down with some of the greatest minds of our generation when creating this little gem was a guy named Dave Lineker. Now, you might not know his name, but trust me, you do know the company he created. I went to him, I says, Dave, what was it like getting started in real estate back in 1970? He says, man, it was horrible. <laughs> he says it was really challenging because all the investors' money ran dry and all of a sudden, we had another economic collapse. He says, for two years, every phone that call that came in was from a bill collector. He says, I was so embarrassed when the phone would ring, I'd run across the hall and I'd pick it up so my secretary wasn't put on the spot. He said, the third year, it got even worse. They threw me in jail. They called me a liar and a cheat and a fraud. He says, what did you do? He looked at me and says, well, I took my attitude from trying to prove the world wrong to something more important, prove myself right. He said, I knew I wasn't what they're making me out to be. He said, I had the courage to pick up that phone and call all those bill collectors before they could call me. He says, look, I'm gonna be honest. I don't got 50 grand I owe you, but I got 50 bucks. I'll send it to you today along with a promise that I won't quit. Don't give up on me. I won't give up on my dream. He says, I called every bill collector every month until the fourth year, someone finally believed in my dream. Bought the first business and that's what we know today as Remax Real Estate Corporation. <laughs> he says, you know, I'm just a regular guy. But how many people's lives were changed? How many hundreds of billions of dollars of transactions took place? Because I didn't give up on my goal. And more importantly, how do we know that the person who's got the next American great idea isn't about to give up on their own dream because Visa's calling them right now? Oh, wow, huh? Now, personally, I could almost relate to what Dave was going through because I don't know about you, but the last few years have been a little bit challenging right now through our own economic challenges. And I remember one person I had an opportunity to sit down with, Jen Viev Boss, who started Pink Magazine. I went to her and I was feeling kind of down on myself because I remember things used to be a little bit more productive and I had a little bit more prosperity in my pockets. And I went to her and I said, Genevieve, I just feel down on myself. I, I feel kind of like a loser, like a failure, like I'm not living up to my old expectations. She leans into me and she says, never let your mistakes, your setbacks, or your circumstances determine your value as a person. Genevieve, you just don't understand what I'm going through. I mean, that old quote says, the 
older we get, the better we used to be. Well, right now, I used to be pretty darn productive <laughs> right now. And like I said, I just feel kind of like a failure. She goes, I understand that. But never let your mistakes or setbacks determine your value. She reached into her pocket and she pulled out a crisp $100 bill and she goes, here, do you want this? I says, yeah, I really do. And she crumpled it and she goes, here, do you want that bill? And I said, absolutely. She goes, why? And I says, well, it's a hundred bucks and I'm being direct with you. I could really use that money right now. That might just be the taxi funds to get back to the airport. She takes that hundred dollar bill and she throws it on the ground and steps on it like a cigar butt. And she goes, do you still want that? I said, yeah, I really do. That hundred bucks would go a long way for me. And she leaned in again and says, then why is it in life when we have challenges, when we have struggles, when we get crumpled, we get thrown to the ground, and we get stepped on, we think our value changes as a person. Just like that $100 bill is still worth $100, just because of the things you're going through doesn't change your value as a human being. Pretty powerful, right? And right then and there was like a little swift kick to the head. It says, you know what? I'm gonna start changing my view. And I sat down with one of the greatest interviews I ever did. His name is Ron Glosser. He ran a little company you might've heard of called Hershey Chocolate, <laughs> $6 billion. And he said something profound. He said, never make your major life-changing decisions when you're in a valley. I go, what do you mean? He says, think about it. He goes, we all have ups and we all have downs. He goes, but how can you make a positive, life-changing decision based at your lowest point in life? He goes, looking back, it seems like we make most of our choices when we get sick, we get laid off, we lose our job, the economy tanks, we go bankrupt. He goes, you can't make a positive decision from that point of view. He goes, but everything is cyclical. You have ups and you have downs. So when you have that down, all you gotta do is ride the storm till you have a little bit of a rise, a little bit of an upswing a little bit of wind in your sails. He says, if you can make a decision from that point of view, when things are going your direction, you'll save over 10 years of your life on this planet from having to go back and correct the wrong choices you made based at your lowest point. Pretty powerful, huh? And you're probably thinking to yourself, well, that's easy for them to say they're all successful. What about Napoleon Hill and write and think and grow rich and three feet from gold and all this? Well, you see, it wasn't always easy for even Mr. Napoleon Hill himself. You see, when he wrote Think and Grow Rich, he was turned down by every single publisher for over 15 years. Everyone said he was crazy. He says, look, if Aristotle and Socrates and Plato couldn't figure out the formula for success, what makes you think you can? And one day when he almost gave up his own three feet from gold, he wrote a letter home to his wife. In his own words, this is what he said. We'll soon be having lots of money. Leave it to me to get it. But meanwhile, encourage me and tell me you think I can. You have no idea what it's like when not a soul on earth encourages you and all the negative forces pour in. It takes superhuman strength and will to throw them off. I'd give anything if I had someone tell me I could succeed, even if they didn't believe it themselves. I say it to myself, but it's not the same as if it came from an outsider, the inner self of me denies it. Do you understand what I'm going through? Do you? Well, then perhaps you can sympathize and send me just a little bit of encouragement. It'll go over in a big way and one day, I'll bring home the bacon. So the message is this. How many times have we or someone we know given up on our goals when we're that close to the finish line, our own vein of gold? The realities are you have greatness within you. For the last few years, you've been taking care of your family, you've been taking care of your friends, you take care of your peers, you take care of everyone else, and it's time to start taking care of us. As Les Brown says, fill your own cup full and then you can feed the world with what flows over. Because right now is your turn. It's time to draw an imaginary line in the sand and say, it's my turn. It's my turn to start experiencing, learning, and taking the first steps to creating a life of sustained abundance. Because you know what? You got greatness inside of you. You got a story that's waiting to be told, an invention that's waiting to be created. And right now, what would happen if you gave up on that dream when you too are just three feet from gold?